Welcome to TechSoup, everybody. This is the new member orientation and Q&A. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm so glad you are here. I'm going to show you how you can engage on the next slide so we can get right into this. Um, this is your first time on one of our webinars. Um, you know that you're on mute. We would love for you to put your questions in the Q&A um, section so we can answer them as they come up. We will email you the video and the slides within 48 hours, probably tomorrow. And if you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Nick Finn and have a great webinar, everybody. I'll be right here in the chat. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Um, welcome to TechSoup. Um, I know that we have two different groups of folks on the call today. One is um, a group of folks whose organization has just joined TechSoup. You're brand new to us, we're brand new to you. So um, this is the right place to be. Some of you I also know um, are new to the organization or in a new role at your organization, um, but they have an existing TechSoup account and you're here to learn more about how TechSoup can help your nonprofit. Um, both of you are in the right place. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my name is Nick Finn. I'm the head of global growth marketing here at TechSoup. Um, and I'm pretty psyched every time I get to do these presentations with folks who are new to TechSoup. Um, and we are going to get rolling here. Um, you've already met the wonderful Aretha Simons. I'm Nick. Um, you're also going to be joined today by Tony Phipps and Kelly Garrett, who are some of the folks at TechSoup who support our customers, our users um, in their journey with technology. Um, and Tony and Kelly, Kelly will talk more about that as we get toward the second half of the presentation. Um, I want to start with some key terms um, that are important to understand um, because we talk about them a lot in nonprofit technology circles. Um, but I don't want to always assume that everybody knows exactly what they mean. Um, we talk about civil society, and when we do, we're really talking about the change makers, the people working to do good around the world in nonprofits and NGOs, charities, and other organizations. Um, these are the folks who are not working in a business and they're not working in the government per se. Um, that's what civil society is. It's, it's the broad group of human beings around the world trying to make the world a better place through various institutions, right? Another term you'll hear talked about is digital transformation. Um, and this really is the process of organizations really embracing technology as a tool that can help them achieve their goals um, to improve their functions and to improve for nonprofits the delivery of their programs, right? And it really is a different thing than just like accepting that you have to work with technology. It's a much more positive, proactive approach that says we're embracing technology to do those things. Um, Digital resilience is another term, and it's really how we can ensure that a nonprofit's technology can help that nonprofit to respond, to adapt, and continue to serve during an external disruption or some kind of crisis. And uh, those can look like anything, um, and they're happening around the world, around all of us, all the time. Um, you know, for some folks who are operating in a war zone. Um, Digital resilience is an absolutely critical piece of an NGO or nonprofit's operations. Um, but uh, there are, of course, numerous ways in which digital, digital resilience matters in lots of environments. Um, cloud adoption is another term that we talk about in nonprofit technology circles. Um, and uh, I almost feel like we don't need to really bring this up anymore to folks. I think everybody really does understand it. But to recap it, it's this notion of moving away from just like software that's loaded on a local computer that sits on your desk toward these large integrated global platforms that exist in the World Wide Web, right, in servers around the world, and that we tap into these platforms and use them to communicate with each other, to share resources. Um, and so it's that whole idea of moving off of your local desktop into the World Wide Web as a tool and as a platform. Now let's get into the meat of our discussion today. What is TechSoup? Well, the first thing I wanna say is that like you, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, we do not exist to create a profit. Um, we are not a business. 
We are a nonprofit 501c3. This doesn't mean that revenue doesn't matter to us. Of course it does. Otherwise, we would not be able to continue operating and providing the nonprofit sector with the services and support that we provide. Our mission is to support nonprofits who are working with technology to build a more equitable planet. Each of you working in a nonprofit on this call have a mission statement that your staff and leadership adhere to. Um, and we have that as well. And our big goal is that equitable planet perspective, but our perspective is that nonprofits can get us there or help get us there. Um, and that technology can be a powerful tool in your arsenal. How do we do that? Well, TechSoup hosts a catalog online at TechSoup.org of affordable technology products for major brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many, many more. We do understand that sometimes the cost of technology itself is one of the real blockers for nonprofits adopting technology. So we do the best that we can to negotiate good prices with these technology providers, with these companies that make platforms, and then pass those savings on to nonprofits. TechSoup charges its own modest admin fee to support our operations as well. In addition to the catalog at TechSoup.org, we also provide numerous services to nonprofits to help them with technology. And in fact, I would say today, that's almost the most important part of what we do. We know that for nonprofits, simply buying or acquiring a technology product is not the end of a journey, it's the beginning. Once you have paid for and gotten that technology product, there are a host of new issues that come with it. How do you implement it properly? How do you train your staff to use it? How do you manage it over time? How do you make sure that that platform is secure? How do you learn about all the special features that that platform can offer? How do you know if a platform you're using perhaps is reaching the end of its functional help and maybe it's time to look for something else? How do you make sure that the technology you're using is the best that you can get for what your mission is. These are the kinds of questions that TechSoup can help you think about. And our services are very specifically designed to help nonprofits, and we'll talk more about those specific services in a minute, but they're there to help you deal with these different technology products, both software and hardware that your nonprofit might be using. In addition to the product catalog and the services, we also provide educational resources broadly to the nonprofit sector. Those can look like a lot of different things. Sometimes it's a PDF that you can download to learn about something. We have all sorts of videos online about helpful tips and tricks. Um, sometimes they can be in a context like a live webinar, like what we're doing today. Um, but uh, those are free educational resources that we provide to the sector to help you understand more about the technology that you're using or that you might want to use. And then finally, again, going back to the first notion of being a 501c3, in addition to the products and the services and the educational resources we provide, TechSoup also does its own grant-based programming, meaning that we also spend time applying for grants from foundations and funders, and then using that money to uh, execute specific projects in the nonprofit sector, helping nonprofits deal with sustainability and uh, issues related to their digital resilience, all sorts of different one-off projects, like similar to what most of you probably work on. So in the big picture, like you again as a nonprofit, TechSoup actually does a lot of different things, and it really depends on what angle you're coming at TechSoup. Um, and just because you interact with us in one way does not mean that's the only thing that we're doing. We have a lot on our plates, and we all wear a lot of hats during the day at TechSoup. Um, we serve nonprofits of all sizes as well. Um, and this is just a quick chart to kind of give you some visibility into what that distribution looks like. But um, that includes nonprofits 
that serve or are themselves traditionally underserved or high touch, high impact, and low margin. Um, all nonprofits are within TechSoup's scope of mission. That is part of what we believe that we need to do as part of our mission. Um, and in terms of specific topical areas, it runs the gambit again. Nonprofits in the US and around the world touch almost every major issue that human beings face. Um, and uh, similarly, so does TechSoup. We work with nonprofits across all these different mission areas. So let's start by talking a little bit more about that product catalog I mentioned up front. Here I've got a screenshot of the TechSoup website, techsoup.org. This was taken a while ago, so that top image might look a little different. Uh, but you'll see right there in the middle of the page, there's a browse catalog button. You can also see at the top in the black navigation bar, there is a product catalog. That takes you to the offers that I want to talk about. And I'm going to start with Microsoft. You know, um, by far, TechSoup's largest partner over the course of our existence has been Microsoft, who were very supportive of nonprofits early on and also encouraged TechSoup to really dream big about what our mission could be. Um, we've offered a lot of different Microsoft products over time. Today, really, what most nonprofits are coming to TechSoup for is Microsoft 365, which is the cloud version of the Microsoft Office suite that we are all familiar with, with Word and Excel and PowerPoint. Um, but the cloud version of that, Microsoft 365, is really what most nonprofits are leveraging through TechSoup today. Also through TechSoup, we do have access to the Windows Pro full operating system. Um, but the Microsoft partnership is a big deal in the TechSoup catalog. And if your organization is thinking about bringing its Microsoft stack sort of more current, wanting to look at Microsoft 365, I definitely encourage you to look at TechSoup for that. Um, and uh, you'll get access to some really great experts like uh, Tony, who's going to talk a little bit later here, um, who can really help your nonprofit, like get that Microsoft 365 instance set up correctly, choose the right license, don't pay more than you actually need to be paying, migrate your email and your data, all those things. Adobe is another very big partner with TechSoup. If you work in graphic design or web design or communications in nonprofits, you're probably already using an Adobe product somewhere. Um, Creative Cloud is the one that uh, lots of graphic designers for years now have been leveraging through TechSoup. Um, if you're not trained to use Creative Cloud, it can feel a little overwhelming. Um, we also have Acrobat Pro DC, which is the really the Adobe standard for managing PDFs, the portable document format. Um, and the new latest and greatest offer from Adobe at TechSoup is called Adobe Express. Um, it's currently available through TechSoup for a $0 admin fee. Um, Adobe Express is really designed to be a more user, easy, a more user friendly, easier uh, platform to use than Creative Cloud. You know, if you do a lot of social media and you need stuff to post online a lot, Adobe Express is a wonderful product to take a look at. Intuit QuickBooks is also a very, very solid choice at TechSoup for lots of nonprofits. It, it, it didn't take much more than a global pandemic four years ago to remind everybody that a paper and pencil accounting system is not good enough. You absolutely have to have some kind of digitized system for tracking your books, your income and expenses. And QuickBooks is really uh, the, the platform that most nonprofits who come to TechSoup end up using. Um, we have Online Plus at $75 a year, um, and then there's an advanced version as well. These are really cloud-based products from QuickBooks, um, definitely something that lots of folks look at. We have a ton of other brands in the TechSoup catalog, by the way, not just those three. And while I'm not going to go into each of these deeply, I do want to share with you the broad swath of offers that we do have at TechSoup from these different brands. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that includes Cisco, which is wonderful networking um, uh, and some newer stuff that's come to catalog for us. One thing that I always like to point out because I have a little bit of an arts background, for instance, is Autodesk, which is this great CAD and design platform that some arts organizations sometimes use. 
You see Grant Station on this page as well. Um, they provide a product that helps nonprofits look for uh, opportunities for grant funding online. And we actually do a special promo with GrantStation twice a year. And we had ours two, three weeks ago. It was super successful. Always a great bellwether for how nonprofits are feeling. Software is not the only thing you can find in the TechSoup catalog. We do have access to hardware as well. Um, to see our hardware offers, you have to start by going to the product catalog in the top navigation. And then you'll see that hardware uh, nav pops down below there. Um, we have new and refurbished laptops and desktops, servers, networking, and internet hotspots and headsets. And we have other things that come through this catalog all the time as well. It's interesting to just keep an eye on what's available there. Um, TechSoup's built relationships with Dell, Lenovo, and HP, where we do provide access uh, to some special discounted rates through those manufacturers. Um, one of our biggest lines of hardware uh, is refurbished hardware. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, refurbished hardware is where you take a computer that's not yet, that is no more, it's not brand new anymore. Maybe it's a year or two old. Um, and a refurbisher does a once over on that computer, makes sure it's wiped clean of any information, and then makes sure that the hardware and the software in that computer are, you know, up to spec for what a modern computer would have to do. Um, but essentially, you're buying a used computer that somebody has certified is still completely powerful and able to handle the work that you need. Um, there's two great advantages to this. One obviously is cost because you're not paying the brand new price, but the other is it's a much greener practice uh, than just simply sending all these uh, hardware packages to landfill when people feel like they no longer have to use them. Um, and uh, TechSoup was one of the pioneers in this refurbished hardware industry. It's an industry that's grown quite a bit since um, the, the early days, but those refurbished units are still available through TechSoup. And so, you know, if really pinching down on expenditures is part of what you're worried about right now, that's a definite, that's a great place to look for some additional savings. Um, and like I said, we often have other things coming through the hardware catalog, mobile devices, monitors, networking equipment. Um, one thing I don't have on this slide at all right now is we introduced a couple of weeks ago the MetaQuest Pro device to the TechSoup catalog. That's the virtual reality uh, goggles. Um, and, uh, you know, it's super interesting to watch how nonprofits would adopt these and figure out some use cases for them. Even though virtual reality itself has been a topic of conversation for decades now, we're only just starting to really get to the point where you know that hardware is is easily accessible to folks, and and now it's a real it's a real question of like how are folks going to adopt this? What are the different ways in which uh, virtual reality itself can be a technology that might help nonprofits? All right, so moving on from the product catalog itself, I want to talk about the services that TechSoup also provides, and as I said, I think these are almost our core offering now because. So many nonprofits need more than just help with getting like saving a little bit of money on software and hardware. It's really like, how do you implement these different pieces of software and hardware? Um, how do you manage them? How do you troubleshoot them? How do you make sure you're getting everything out of them? You know, the value, as they would say. Um, how are you really making sure that you're getting everything out of that software and hardware that you really hoped to get? Um, our services are available in the drop-down menu, again at the top under services, self-explanatory, we are adding new stuff all the time. Um, I want to talk about a couple of... The first is our help desk service, um, which is available both one-off or for like a monthly or annual subscription. But, but help desk is really TechSoup helping you figure out a specific thing, an isolated problem. Maybe there's a printer that you have in your office or at home now in remote work that is just consistently giving you issues, something like that. You know, a help desk support ticket uh, is a way that you can get TechSoup to help you deal with whatever that small scale technical issue is. Um, on the other hand, some organizations don't need one-off solutions for small things. They're looking for help in a much broader context, how to manage their overall IT stack. That's what our managed IT service is about. This is really helping nonprofits 
to manage all their technology, soup to nuts, end to ends, having a strategy in place, really thinking through what the important questions are around their technology acquisitions. For most nonprofits, the primary communications channel you now have with the public, with your supporters, with your own users and constituencies, and maybe other folks like elected officials or journalists, it's your website, right? And what a profound piece of technology that is. Your website says everything about your nonprofit. Um, and yet, if you talk to nonprofits about their websites, it's very, very rare that somebody says, oh, my website is great. It does everything I want it to. Most people are saying, oh my God, I really need help with my website. How can we change this? What can we do? What should we do? Um, TechSoup's website services are, are there to help you answer those questions and then figure out how to implement changes to your website. And I'm going to be right up front with you here. That's not free. There's a cost involved with these services, right? Um, because they are real and legitimate pieces of how to help your organization run better. Um, and so if you're thinking about making changes to your website, or if you need an entirely new website, you know, think about what the budgeting is around that, but take a look at TechSoup's website services as a way to help bring your nonprofit's website up to speed, or at least get it into a better place. Um, if your nonprofit also engages in outbound marketing, meaning, and, and sometimes we call it just, we just call that outreach, right? Because again, like we're a nonprofit, not a business, but marketing, outreach, whatever you want to call it, um, we can help your nonprofit structure some of that as well, especially if we're talking about advertising you might place on other platforms or thinking about search engine optimization for your website, making sure people can find you. If you send out email, if you're engaged in social media, or maybe you really have a customer relationship management tool that you're working with. Um, our marketing services can help you um, do things in those areas where you feel there needs to be improvement. Um, we have a new service that we launched um, some months ago called Domain Registration. Um, there are lots of folks who launch nonprofits with a wonderful view on the good work they could do in the community but maybe don't have the technical background to figure out how to set up their own website, how to register a domain based on their nonprofit's name. Um, it's a small technical thing, but we can help you with that. So you want to check out the domain registration service at TechSoup. And then, as I mentioned, uh, if you're looking at Microsoft 365, um, there is a specific email and data migration service uh, that we offer for Office 365. Um, that may well be part of, of what you should be interested in if you're looking at that platform. Um, I also want to call out something at TechSoup called the Digital Assessment Tool. It's available in that services dropdown. The Digital Assessment Tool is not a service so much as it is a way for you to evaluate how your nonprofit is doing on various measurements of its technical aptitude. How is it best using technology across different functional areas of the nonprofit, like fundraising or finance or human resources, right? Um, it sends you through a series of questions where you provide answers about what your nonprofit's currently doing. Um, and then at the end of that, you get some score uh, on how you're uh, assessing your digital readiness in those various areas. Um, and those things can help you in a couple of ways. I mean, one is obviously it gives you a path to pursue to improve your nonprofit's operations. But in some cases, it also provides you with um, ammunition to build a grant application with where you're saying to a funder, hey, we really need to improve this particular part of our nonprofit's technical stack. And in fact, we've gone through the TechSoup digital assessment tool and it's, it's, it's proposing that we look at these things. And so sometimes this can really be an effective fundraising tool for you if you're looking for some money to particularly focus on a specific area. All right, past services now, I do wanna call out something particularly special at TechSoup, which is called TechSoup Boost. Um, Boost is a membership product at TechSoup it's a subscription that gives you access to sort of a, a more ginned up, strengthened version of TechSoup. There are some offers in the Boost catalog. 
that you won't find in the broader TechSoup catalog. Um, there are some uh, discounted rates and uh, savings in the Boost catalog that are that are more aggressive and a little different than what you see in the rest of uh, the TechSoup catalog. Um, and uh, we're also building out Boost more with ideas around how to help nonprofits choose particular products by providing some content uh, that does, you know, this versus that evaluations, right? Um, and so if you are a nonprofit that thinks that you will be particularly forward thinking in technology, TechSoup Boost is something you should really take a look at. Um, and think about becoming a, a TechSoup Boost member because it will just give you a, a deeper engagement with TechSoup um, around these technical products. Um, the annual membership at this point is $99. And uh, yeah, I think it really is the, it's the sweet spot of a TechSoup membership right now. Um, we have a second membership level called Quad. Um, Quad is sort of the most powerful version of TechSoup, and it's really designed for nonprofit leaders who really don't want to worry about their technology stack. They, they really want somebody else to help do all the thinking around that, to help them figure out what it is they need to do. So Quad is the deepest level of engagement with TechSoup. It may not be for everybody, um, but it really is for the power user, the place where TechSoup probably has the most value. Um, it is currently a $200 annual uh, fee per organization. Um, and so if you really are thinking that you want like the most support you possibly can get from TechSoup, I recommend taking a look at Quad. Now, another thing that I really love about TechSoup is this organization really walks the walk more than just talking the talk when it comes to human beings. And that means a lot of different things. Uh, as somebody who works at TechSoup, I feel that with my colleagues and coworkers. I really enjoy the people that I work with, and they're all really dedicated to helping other nonprofits do well in the world. Um, but the other thing it means is for you that TechSoup is not just some website that you make product orders on, and that's all. We have live human beings who are here to help you in that process. Um, and so I want to bring two of them to the forefront now. The first is uh, Kelly Garrett and her team. Um, Kelly is an associate account manager at in the client services department at TechSoup. Um, and what client services do is work directly with nonprofits in managing your TechSoup account, right? So if you've got issues with like how an order was placed or something to do with resetting passwords or you need to add a new person to your TechSoup account, anything like that, um, Kelly and her team will be able to help you. So I see Kelly's slide has come up there. There's Kelly, she's coming off mute. You can take it away. Thank you so much, Nick. Welcome everyone. I've been chatting with you in the webinar chats and answering your questions in the Q&A um, section that we have. So please feel free to keep ping, uh, putting those in. Um, I think I've gotten to most of everybody's stuff, but um, I'm going to be explaining how you can get in touch with customer service and all that good stuff um, in case you have any follow-up questions or is there anything we missed during this webinar. Um, so first things first is a lot of questions we get from our new members is, asking about product information. How much does it cost? Is there a renewal free? What's the subscription um, timing? Um, when am I gonna have to pay for this? All good questions, all important questions. And we have set up our website to try to answer pretty much all of the common questions and in providing the information that you all need to know. So QuickBooks Online Plus is probably one of our most popular products, especially right now. We know it's tax seasons for folks. We've been seeing a lot of requests, a lot of questions about it. So this is the product I like to go over with new members to kind of highlight where you can find all the information that you're looking for. Um, first things first is when you search either by using the drop down options on the top left corner, um, which Nick highlighted earlier. So there's the donor company category or hardware. Um, or you use that magnifying glass in the top right corner to look for a specific product and you find it, you click on the uh, product's name and you are brought to this landing page, which we call the product page or the offer detail page. 
Um, this is where all the details are. First thing I tell everyone to look at is all the information underneath the name of the product. You'll see the partner, which you can click on to see what other products they offer. So this one says Intuit. You could click on that and it would take you to the Intuit program page with all of their products listed. Um, it tells you what categories this is in. So if you were actually to use the drop down category menu and clicked accounting, you'd see this product listed there. You could also click on it right there and it would take you to a category page where you could look at other accounting software. Right now, we pretty much just have QuickBooks as accounting software. The rest of the things in that category are going to be like payroll add-ons and things like that. Um, below that, you'll see if it, the availability. If it's out of stock, it will say out of stock. Um, you'll also see the format um, or the platform, so multiple platforms. Really important to note, you know, sometimes it's Windows-only products, sometimes it's Mac-only products, so it was a good idea to really review that. Then there's also going to be uh, three tabs of information on every single page. They can be labeled differently. It's usually description on the left, which is what you start on, and then the rules, eligibility, and restrictions on the right. The middle tab's name can change depending on the product. Um, we do have products, for example, that are access to discounted rates. This means that you pay TechSoup an admin fee to access the discounted rate, and then you pay that discounted rate to the part provider. Zoom's a very popular product for access to discounted rates. You pay TechSoup $18. We send you a coupon code. You then get 50% off that you pay directly to Zoom. So always a good idea to check all three tabs because that kind of information will be detailed. Description is the first place to go. If you scroll down that page, you're going to see benefits for your organizations, how you're going to obtain the product. Pretty much all the software and services you see are remote or electronically delivered and, and facilitated. Only hardware is going to be physically shipped. When you're checking out, you'll probably, you usually see a shipping address on there. If it's not a hardware product, you don't really need to worry about that. That's just, you're going to be getting an email, a fulfillment email with your fulfillment information that you'll use to get that code, uh, get that download link. And that information is stored in your My Account. You're, you have a request history section and a fulfillment email section in your My Account. So I always recommend going and checking there for any pending requests, uh, looking for your fulfillment email. We try to make sure everything's accessible through your account. So I really recommend poking around and familiarizing yourself with that. Uh, next slide, please. So middle tab, especially when it says subscription details, I highly recommend always reviewing thoroughly before requesting a subscription product or an access to discounted rate product. Um, this is where you're going to see continuing service after one year that explains what's going on on what you can anticipate. It also has links to system requirements. It lets you know about system limitations, when your start date was. All the information that you're kind of looking for and a lot of questions that we get are answered in this middle tab. It's easy to miss since they are a little small and is kind of gray on white, something we've heard from our members and, and are keeping in mind. Um, but make sure you're clicking through all three, reading everything before you request a product or, or a service since many are not refundable and cannot be exchanged. Um, that's a thing that uh, we TechSoup have in our checkout agreements and most of our providers have as well. The idea is that, you know, if you request something and don't want it anymore, we can't get it to another nonprofit. Now that license has been wasted. And a lot of our providers only give us a certain number of licenses, products, discount codes, et cetera, per fiscal year. And so we do really try to make sure that, you know, everyone's checking out with what they need and we're not issuing a lot of refunds and stuff. Perfect. Um, next slide, please. So when you're looking for support, um, if you have already checked the product page and you are not seeing what you were looking for, um, if you're not seeing what you're looking for, uh, then I recommend going to the help uh, tab. Um, it's all the way at the top. It's always going to be next to the login button or it's going to be that circle icon with like an outline of a person. That's what you see when you're logged in. That's how you access your account. Help button's always going to be right to the left of that. Right to the left. <laughs> it's going to be right there. So um, next slide, please. When you click on that, you'll be taken to TechSoup support. That is support.techsoup.org. That has a ton of really informative articles, how-tos. Um, we're constantly developing this. We're constantly updating it. So really recommend going and checking here every time you have a question. A lot of times you're going to be able to find your answer either on the product page or in this TechSoup support um, articles. Next slide, please. Um, 
So TechSoup support and also TechSoup customer service on support.techsoup.org and www.techsoup.org is designed for U.S.-based organizations. If your organization is not based in the United States, if it's located in Canada um, or somewhere else, you do need to go to that specific partner's website to access that support service and your account information. Uh, we basically have different partners in different countries and regions regions that can provide support. The information I'm giving you right now is for US-based organizations, and that's where you want to um, get started is TechSoup.org or the support.TechSoup.org. We also have this great article highlighting everything that uh, Nick went over earlier. It's all about the products and services like Quad. If you want to learn more about that, it's got links to the different pages. Um, we have product information. Um, it explains how I just went over where you look at the information, making sure you're looking at those tabs. Highly recommend um, this e uh, checking out this web or sorry checking out this URL. Um, we do send out the slides and the recording after this. You can also check type in TechSoup support services or TechSoup support um, on the support page, and you should be able to find this article pretty quickly. Um, it's one of our more popular articles, so it, it does populate usually at the top of your search list. Next slide, please. So what can TechSoup customer service do for you? Again, this is for US-based organizations. Um, we can assist you with account management, eligibility questions. You know, not every organization is gonna be eligible for every nonprofit program. Um, it is based on location. It is based on budget, size of organization, your mission, lots of different factors go into it. Um, and it's not a comment on the good work your organization's doing. Providers just have their own philanthropic focus and they are focused on certain types of organizations, certain, you know, organizations, on, you know, under a certain budget and some of their products, it's over a certain budget under. So eligibility questions, always check, you know, the product page. If you still got questions, welcome to reach out to us and we'll explain it to you. Um, we'll also help you navigate resources, requesting products. Um, what we can assist you with is IT support and in-depth product support and in-depth product functionality questions. That's because customer service is in charge of helping folks with all of these different products, all of these different providers. We have not created any of these products or, um, except for the services. And so a lot of times we're gonna ask you to go back to the partner or the provider that um, is offering that nonprofit product or service. So for example, if you were having issues installing or activating your QuickBooks Online Plus, we would send you to Intuit Support so that they could assist you with downloading and installing and using their product. It's the same products on the commercial market or retail market as it is available on TechSoup. The only difference is you're getting an admin. The admin fee is going to be a nonprofit rate. So it's going to be the best rate out there for the market. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you do need support services and you know the provider hasn't been able to help you, I highly recommend going back to that um, support article that I highlighted before, um, and go and that will help you pick out maybe a help desk support um, quad. You might want to join quad. You get a dedicated support team. All that good stuff. Um, next slide, please. Uh, yes, the fees, I just saw someone ask, are the fees quoted are U.S. dollars? TechSoup.org is for United States-based organizations. All the fees are U.S. dollars because only United States-based organizations are going to be able to check out with those. Um, so just to keep that in mind, I know we have a couple people from Canada. A lot of this stuff, you're going to need to go and double check on TechSoup. Uh, .ca. That's where the TechSoup Canada website offers catalog. Your account are located. Um, that will have the admin fees that you're going to um <clears throat> want to check in with. Um, perfect. So for this U.S. customer service, we have recently launched live chat. Um, we have, are exclusively assisting folks through live chat. Um, we no longer have phones or uh, contact us form. Um, instead, we've got our live representatives giving um, support from usually 7 a.m. I apologize, there's a typo here. It's usually from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. right now. Um, you can always check what our weekly live chat hours are by clicking the help button. Um, and that will let you know when we are available. It is Pacific time. We are located on the West Coast. So something to keep in mind is that if you're not seeing that um, 
live chat option, it's, you might be outside of our hours of operation, which you can always check in that help bubble. These are subject to change based on holidays and other factors. So something to keep in mind um, is always check what, um, those daily uh, hours. And then I do have some troubleshooting in case you are within hours and you're not seeing our live chat as an option. Uh, next slide, please. So when you're looking for help um, for TechSoup US customer service, you are going to go to www.techsoup.org or support.techsoup.org. Um, I'm showing you the main website right here. Um, you'll see that there's a help button in the bottom right corner. You'll see at the top there, there is um, the hours are listed in the black header. And then you'll see that black live chat button within the pop-up window. Next slide, please. So I'm not able to connect to live chat. What's going on? Um, we've done a thorough testing and we've looked very much into this. We sometimes get reports from members that they don't see the help button bubble or they don't see the live chat button. And we've pretty much determined that this has to do with the device being used or the browser being used. Um, one of the big things to keep in mind is that um, we don't recommend mobile devices to access our website. Um, that would be cell phones, tablets, et cetera. We really recommend using a computer to access www.techsoup.org. Um, if you use a mobile device, you're not going to see the live chat button on that website. Support.techsoup.org is on a different platform, so you will actually see the live chat button if you use a mobile device. But overall, everything usually runs a little bit smoother if you use a device for navigating the website, accessing chat, checking out, account management, all that stuff. I really recommend a computer. Um, if you are using a computer and it's still not popping up, um, you know, try a different browser. Um, make sure your browser is the most up-to-date version on the market. We have found that older versions of browsers um, are not always loading the live chat button. Uh, we've had several members confirm this. Um, we've also found that uh, pop-up blocker, pop-ups and blocker extensions in their in your browser settings um, will lead to the help bubble and the live chat not appearing. Um, so, you know, make sure you're um, turning that off or you can try a completely different computer. You know, if you're at your work computer, maybe try your home computer. And we do have a great forums post that we recently posted this week um, that has more in all of this information here, along with the screenshots that we showed you. So that is um, the recommended uh, troubleshooting. This so far has worked for everybody that I've had report an issue to me that I've worked with. It is a device or it's a browser issue. Um, we are taking actively taking chats and we've tested our systems when we've gotten these reports and we figured out that it's on members end. Um, I believe that might be my last slide, but next slide. Yes, that is my last slide. Um, I did see there were some questions for me, so I'm gonna try to clear those out right now. Um, before we end this meeting. Tony, I will let you take it from here. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate that uh, and appreciate everybody being on the call. Uh, welcome, welcome. Um, as Nick and everyone has shared, I am part of the customer success team. My name is Tony Phipps. And customer success, what are we about? Well, there's seven of us on the team and we basically try to walk the organization through whatever phase that you're in with your technology, whether it's just learning more about the products and services that TechSoup has to offer. Um, maybe it's about, you know, your technology stack and am I using the right thing? Am I not? So we really try to meet the organization where they're at. So as you can see here, um, it's got a little bit of some examples of how we are as a team. Uh, we've got over 20 years of experience helping nonprofits. Um, we definitely are involved with all the different products and services. So we try to teach you more about that and see if it's something that'll work for you guys. Um, again, we're certified. Uh, my partner, uh, Kevin, is Microsoft certified at least four or five times. Um, I just recently got AWS certified. So you definitely have people on your side that kind of know what's going on. So we can kind of walk you through some things. Again, just depending on where you're at in your journey, uh, we just try to meet you where you're at. So um, with that, I will uh, pass the torch back over to Nick. Well, there we go, folks. We got through it all. Um, I just want to call out like what the differentiation between Kelly and Tony's team here. So like I said, 
the client services team that Kelly uh, helps run is really there to help you manage your relationship with TechSoup. Tony and his team help you actually do better with the specific products that you've gotten from TechSoup. Um, and uh, I think that uh, at the end of the day, the great thing about TechSoup is that we do try to like fill several different roles depending on what kind of organization you're at and what your level of technology expertise and adoption really is. Um, and, and like I said, around the real people, like that's the other part of TechSoup uh, is that you do have real people that you get to work with, that you interact with. Um, and uh, when you need help, you can get help from a real person rather than just um, feeling like you know, there's there's nobody to turn to and, and no way to get your question asked. Uh, and again, if your questions are going to be really deep and technical around stuff, you really need to think about the booster quad membership specifically as a way, um, yeah, to give your organization a little more access to what TechSoup can offer. Um, with that, we've reached the end of today's webinar. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of you who attended today, not just because you attended, but also because you've all individually made a choice to work in the nonprofit sector. Um, and, and that says something about what your priorities are. You're, you're trying to work to build a better community, um, to offer something to civil society, to help make the world a better place. And, and there are a million different ways you can do that. But thank you to each of you who've, who've made that choice in, in your career and where you're working right now. Um, uh, with that said, um, I know that you will receive emails after this webinar with a link to this deck. There are live links in this deck that you can click on to get to some of the offers and services we talked about. Um, but uh, I encourage you to take a look at the TechSoup website, um, see if there's some things on there that might be helpful to you and your nonprofit. Um, and uh, as you've already learned, we've got folks um, ready to help if if that's what you need. Um, and uh, with that, I will call this webinar done. Thank you so much for your time today.